Hello to all of our members at Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church and also to all of our listeners and um, we just want to say uh, God's blessings be upon you and we are in this study session number seven out of unit two Jesus and calls in his ministry. And this uh, title for our lesson for this particular Sunday, January the 17th, 2021, is entitled Healing for the Whole Person. Healing for the Whole Person. Our devotional reading is Psalm, the 103rd number of Psalms, and verses 1 through 14. Our background scripture and our printed passage is the second chapter of Mark, uh, verses 1 through 12. And our key verse is the ninth verse of Mark, the second chapter. I'm reading the NIV version, which reads, Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. Our lesson's aims are to study Mark's account of Jesus healing the man who was paralyzed. Appreciate how one's physical, emotional, social, and spiritual needs are intertwined. Pray for God's healing grace to touch you at your particular point of need. And again, our lesson is divided into different parts out of our Faith Pathway Study Guide. And uh, our first division or our first section is a desperate plea. And then our Second part is a discerning plea. And the third is a divine plea. So a desperate, a discerning, and a divine plea. And as always, uh, it is appropriate and proper that we ask God and the Spirit of God to intervene into this study that the things that God would have us to learn and to apply to our daily living, that we would attend our ears to hear it, but then always be compelled and convicted by the Spirit of God that we would not just be hearers, but also doers of that which we hear. I think that uh, the introduction to our lesson uh, for this particular Sunday is quite fitting because uh, it focuses on a term that um, has gained a lot of attention and recognition uh, in the last uh, couple of decades. And it has been growing uh, ever since. But it 
describes a part of healing called holistic. Holistic healing. And uh, it focuses on uh, a diet and uh, remedies uh, that are natural, uh, not a pharmaceutical prescriptions, but natural medicines and herbs and supplements and alternatives uh, to wellness. And I find this uh, to be uh, quite informative and at the same time to be quite helpful, uh, especially when we have a, a lot of attention focused on mental illness, on uh, uh, mental disabilities, uh, and recognizing that it's interesting because uh, the first uh, commandment that is given to us uh, from the words of Christ, uh, and it's in several passages, but I will be reading from Mark since our lesson is in Mark, but in the 12th chapter of Mark and the 29th verse. It reads, This or the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And I see the correlation between the introduction in our lesson and uh, speaking to holistic practices, uh, focusing on uh, a better person, a better being, a, a healthier lifestyle. Uh, and uh, many uh, of the references and re recommendations about this holistic practice can be centered in our Christian or our Christ-like living. If we would render unto God our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. And this is a encompassing practice that deals with the whole individual, the wholeness of ourselves. And I think uh, that uh, I'm sure many of us uh, are already uh, recognizing and realizing that uh, we are in a uh, period. We're in a, an, an era where there are things that uh, at one time had been viewed as uh, the alternative and they were advertised and presented and uh, portrayed in front of us as though uh, these were the best procedures. Uh, and then um, time has uh, caused us to recognize that uh, they were uh, suggestions 
they were some uh, alternatives, but not the only. And when we recognize uh, new entries into the medical field uh, and understand regulations and how things go through different checkpoints, uh, just listening sometimes to the offering of new medications that are being released uh, from pharmaceutical companies. Uh, it may be addressing one concern in our health, but it brings along with it about eight or ten other side effects. And we must uh, look seriously into the upkeep and stewardship of our health and recognize that um, certainly uh, we thank God for the advancements in medicine, but then we also have to be a lot more aware of what is good for our overall health and what is just being presented uh, along the uh, persuasion of money and promotion and profit at the end of our accumulation of certain uh, pharmaceutical prescriptions that are out. Now our lesson uh, deals with uh, issues about how a healing was present among the people and there were those uh, onlookers uh, in the crowd who came out specifically to see if there was something in the works of Christ that could be uh, brought out, that could be singled out, uh, spoken of in some ill form uh, to discredit the works that everybody clearly saw, marveled at, and were astonished by what Christ was doing. And so... Uh, when we recognize what's going on here, uh, we see that there is a individual that is ill, a man that is paralyzed, and friends of his think enough of him to lift him above a crowd and uh, not that there was a prepared entry available above the crowd, but they thought enough of this individual, this man, to make a way above the crowd so that the man could be lowered into where Christ was present and then be healed. Now, it never says of the four men that lifted the paralytic man, man on the bed, it never said that they thought that if they got him in the presence of God, that uh, in the presence of Christ, that uh, he might uh, be healed. Uh, it never, the scripture does not say that they uh, gathered together and they began to discuss uh, and uh, debate on whether or not uh, if we uh, perform this act right here, it, there may be a chance. Uh, they were uh, rewarded in word because of their act, 
because their act demonstrated that they had the faith that all they had to do was get him into the presence of Christ and that the healing was without question to be fulfilled. Now, now we're going to come back to them exercising and demonstrating their faith and how it was rewarded. But we also want to uh, uh, look at uh, where Christ was. We want to look at the location of uh, where Christ is performing this work. The location, <clears throat> the area where Christ was performing this work was in Capernaum. And Capernaum was located on the north uh, western uh, shores of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. But what's interesting about Capernaum, where Christ is performing uh, this work, is first we have to recognize where the ministry of Christ began. And uh, to help us to uh, understand uh, the work and the reception that was received from Christ as to what Christ is doing in Capernaum, we first need to look at, and there are several uh, passages of scriptures, but... Um, what is said is, is that uh, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. And so what we recognize is, is that Christ began his teachings in Nazareth. But the Nazarenes uh, did not, uh, they were not receptive to what Christ was teaching. Healing was present to his own people, but his own people could not receive the message that he was bringing. There was disdain for the area where Christ grew up as a child. Uh, he was a Nazarene. And uh, to understand this, the people knew Christ well. In the 13th chapter of Matthew, um, as you read into the uh, chapter, if, if we were to start at the thir 13th chapter of Matthew and the 54th verse, uh, it would say that when he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? And then they began to try and associate his familiarity and their connection as to somewhat uh, presented as uh, these are reasons as why he cannot be uh, as great as he is. Some reason as to why he should not uh, have this ability, this wisdom, this power, this authority. So they began to question among themselves and they said, is this not the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother Mary? Don't we know his brothers and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? Because his brothers and his sisters and his mother are just common people such as ourselves. So what makes him 
so great. Uh, uh, how is he able to speak in this manner and astonish us? And he's just a regular person, just like we are. And it says, so they were offended at him. They were offended because he spoke above and beyond what they anticipated or what their expectations were. Or maybe it appeared to be as though they were being slighted because of the magnitude of Christ. And then Christ, after they said they were offended, Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now, he did not many works there because of their unbelief. Many times the blessing is what right within our reach. But because of our own of our own thoughts of ourselves, because of our own expectations or our own limitations, we don't recognize the blessing that is right before us. And so Christ, because he could not perform many works there, just so that uh, you have other scriptures to verify this, um, uh, the fourth tap, uh, chapter of John uh, and the verses, verse 44, but read ahead and read down to verse 44. And also in the, the book of Luke, the fourth chapter, starting at the 16th verse. But verse 24 also uh, reads that a man is not without honor except or that a prophet is not without honor except in his own country. But read down to how the people were so baffled and so uh, astonished and how they just uh, awed at the awesomeness and the, they were just marveling over his words, his teaching, his works. And yet they had uh, rejection. And that brings us into the reception of other people in another area who heard also of the mighty works of Christ but did not have disdain for Christ because of where Christ grew up or where Christ was from or the people that were in Christ's uh, um, contact the familiarity with the area where Christ was from and the people that were from that area. They, they looked and heard about this great work that was being performed by this individual known as Jesus Christ. And they marveled, they hungered, they longed for wanting to be in the company of him so that they could receive and see and hear for themselves this great work that he was performing. And because of that, his friends made provisions, devised a plan to make sure that their friend who was paralyzed would be able to get just into the company of Christ. And they were so certain from what they had heard about the works of Christ. They knew that if we can just get him in the space that Christ is in, he would be healed. And because of their determination, 
The first thing that Christ says when he sees him is, is that the scripture says in verse 5 that when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their determination, when Jesus saw that they were certain that if they made way, if they, if they just uh, pushed themselves and got in the company of healing, that they were certain healing would be provided to them. And Christ responded because of the act of their faith and right away said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Which was quite a profound statement to make when the man had not asked anything but was just in the presence. And right away, Christ responded because of the act that was displayed before them and right away granted what the man and his friends had brought him there for. And so we see then that uh, because of the things that they had done, the sacrifices, the, the, the planning, they were immediately rewarded. And it's strange that at the same time that such fulfillment is granted, at the same time by what he said, those that were doubtful, those that came with other thoughts and plans in their minds, that from what he said, which was healing and freedom for one individual, right away, was contested and challenged and rejected by others. So that they responded that some of the teachers of law that was sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this man talk like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus, full of the spirit, not just the spirit of his earthen vessel, but full of the spirit of God. He responds to them and questions with them as to why are you thinking these thoughts in your heart? He recognizes their attitude. He recognizes what their thoughts are. And then he says, why are you thinking these things? Why do we question authority when it is present? Why do we challenge blessing when it is among us? Why do we fear being healed when healing is what we need? So the paralytic man, we recognize that he was in need of a healing because his mobility uh, had been uh, uh, decreased. Uh, he, uh, he couldn't climb to the roof of the house and dig for himself an opening to get in. He had to rely on the assistance of his friend. But, but those of us that seemingly are in good health, that seemingly are well, uh, that appear to be all right, why do we reject healing and wholeness of self when it's present before us. Recognizing that we are all in need of correction and for a healing. Now it's interesting 
that they spoke of the paralysis. I remember, uh, uh, and, and this is just a significant tie here, but I remember listening uh, to one of Dr. King's uh, speeches uh, since uh, our uh, the, one of the greatest leaders that we've uh, had in America. Um, uh, we are near the celebration um, of that great man of God that was present among us. Uh, but I, I remember in one of uh, his speeches uh, that he gave in Milwaukee, and it's ironic that uh, he gave the speech in Milwaukee, and there was standing room only. Uh, the uh, accountants say that there were 6,300 people in a church uh, called the Congressional Church on Grand Avenue in uh, Wisconsin. I mean, on Wisconsin Avenue in Milwaukee. It was in January, ironically, and uh, as he was speaking to this standing room only, crowd among the things that he uh, mentioned uh, was do not be bowed down by the paralysis of analysis and I found that to be of interest where Christ is delivering an individual a man who was paralyzed. And Dr. King was speaking to masses of people and speaking about us uh, suffering from the dia diagnos uh, diagnosis, pardon me, the diagnosis of the paralysis of analysis. And when I Think about the meaning of the word uh, paralysis. And it says that it is a complete or a partial loss of function, especially when involving motion or sensation in a part of the body. It's the loss of the ability to move. It's the state of powerlessness or incapacity to act. And I thought how appropriate this is because the man, he had lost his ability to move. The paralysis had affected a part of his body. He had lost the, uh, 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 he had encountered a sense of powerlessness. And when Christ uh, saw the man, to answer to a question that the opposition was raising about Christ's blaspheming, he answered their question, but at the same time gave the par a paralytic man the answer that he also was looking for. And he said to those who were in question, which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and take your mat and walk? Christ was not in search of an answer for either of the questions he proposed those questions were proposed for the opposition, for their own quest for what they were seeking. But then he gave them a divine intervening answer. And he said, so that you will know that the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins and to tell this man to get up, take your mat, and go home. And immediately, 
the man picked up his mat and walked out in full view of all of them. And they were amazed and praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. And I want to close with just trying to elaborate just a bit, although God's word doesn't need any of our elaboration. It doesn't need us to pump it up to make it real. But I just wanted to expound upon this just a bit by just identifying here that we started out talking about the wholeness of self. And we briefly entertained about mental illness. And sometimes we are paralyzed by mental issues. We talked about we need to serve God with our whole selves, with our heart, with our mind, with our soul, and with our strength. And sometimes the paralysis that we are facing is not a dysfunction, a disabling physical uh, uh, disorder. Sometimes it is a state of mind. And the spirit of God that was personified in the embodiment of Christ spoke to one of its own creatures and said, get up, get out of that bed, get off that mat, get up, take it, walk, and walk into the life that I have come to give to you. And the people seeing this marveled and were amazed and said they had never seen anything like this. And I believe as I make the parallel between Christ freeing this man from his paralysis, I believe that the voice of Christ and also one of the messengers of God was saying to us then, ain't nothing wrong with y'all except for you are suffering from the paralysis of analysis. Don't get bogged down in the debate and the continued discussions about what God has for us and where God wants us to be. Get up. Remove the barriers and the boundaries that have us bound and walk in the freedom that God is giving to us. We again certainly hope that something has been said that gives us direction, uh, gives us inspiration, and most importantly, gives us what God intended that we would receive. As always, our prayer is that you will be blessed and that the continued Spirit of God will lead and guide us in this day and all the days that God has that are before us. God bless you and God keep you.